Hi there and welcome. Today we're taking a look at my alarm clock. Uh, there's something wrong with the button up here. I think some plastic is broken inside. Uh, so I'm going to open it anyway. So we may just as well uh, have a look. Uh, this alarm clock doesn't look like it's something very special. There's a 7 segment display and, and a couple of buttons on top here. But if I tell you it's from 1982 and it has a speech synthesizer, it may probably be a little bit more interesting. So uh, this is something I built back in uh, back in 82 and uh, actually it appeared in this magazine here New Electronic uh, from 1980, uh, 1983 April and uh, it's on the front page Build this sensation yourself The speaking clock And uh, it appeared inside here, you can see we have the PCB uh, layout uh, There's a little drawing up here of uh, the component placement and uh, there's a picture and some description on how everything works and uh, the schematic is here and I think uh, since we have this alarm clock opened anyway I think we should take a look at the schematic so uh, anyway if you want to hear it say something uh, you just push this uh, uh, aluminium plate up here this, this watch is with touch touch was the big thing in the early 80s I think most people in Denmark who are into electronics built a touch sensitive dimmer for for the lights in the living room. There was a kit from a company called Justy Kit and a lot of people built that. Uh, but anyway, you want to hear it speak? I'll just touch the snooze button out here. 237. 237 in a very nice synthesized voice. And nowadays of course this is nothing. I mean uh, your mobile phone can do stuff like that, your PC, your PC can play music and video and everything uh, but this is way before that so um, very very cool I think, at least back then it's really hard to imagine these days that this would be something very very exciting but really believe me this was amazing back then so let's just let's hear it again and of course you can set the clock here by holding this button down and you can set the alarm by holding this one down there's a fast and slow so that works pretty good and there's a touch of course there's a little switch here that will switch on and off the alarm so some mornings you don't want to wake up you can switch it off here uh, but I'm not sure you can see it the red button here is sitting a little wonky and uh, I think there's some plastic broken inside, so um, we will have a look. So anyway, let me open it up and uh, we can uh, take a look at what what makes this alarm clock tick. Okay, so um, this is the inside and as you can see the power comes in here, there's a little fuse and uh, the transformer itself. Then we have a diode bridge and uh, a capacitor for decoupling. Later on we will have a look at the schematic, because some of these chips are actually using both positive and negative supply. So there is some uh, magic going on here with some of those resistors capacitors. Um, the board of course is complete through hole. There's a little transistor here, there's no voltage regulator in this board, it's all done using uh, Zener diodes and uh, transistors. And uh, it has a heatsink. These two chips, they use so much power that, uh, that this one gets really really hot. In fact, the, the transformer is a 5 watts, 5 volt ampere, uh, 2 by 12 volts, so it's actually using quite a lot of current. Uh, next to that, we have a CMOS chip. I don't remember exactly what it is, I think it's a hex uh, inverter. And uh, that is taking care of the touch input and uh, some other little uh, glue logic. Again, one of the interesting aspects of this board here is actually the touch input, uh, because it's, it's not just picking up hum from your finger, it's actually doing more than that. So we'll have to take a look at that in case you want to do some uh, touch sensitive stuff that actually works. I know nowadays you can buy a touch chip from microchip or something like that. Uh, but if you want to roll your own, uh, this is how you do it. Uh, then there's a power amplifier. This is an LM380. It's not an amplifier that you, that you use these days. But uh, it works really well and I think it's 2 watts out or something like that. So uh, it has no problem driving the speaker. Then down here we have the actual clock chip. It's a National Semiconductor MM5387 This is actually quite an interesting chip This is not a CMOS chip 
As you can see, there are no resistors to limit the current into the LED displays up here. So we will have, have to take a look at the, how they achieve that. The clock itself actually is just this chip and uh, the LED displays which are sitting on this board here and uh, then uh, the power supply of course. There's no crystal for this chip, it's getting the, the timing from the 50 Hz from the transformer here. And finally the speech synthesizer is this little chip here, it's from uh, ITT in Germany. It's called the UAA100-3. This is the English version. Uh, there's also a German version and uh, a 1003-3 which is in French. This chip has a built-in oscillator. It just needs a capacitor and a resistor trimmer here so you can adjust the speed of the, of the speech from that one. I haven't shown you the broken plastic bit um, but if we can move the camera up a little bit um, this board here, this is not done in a good way. There's only two studs and the button is being pushed down. So this is flexing a little bit and I think that's what happened. Uh, this this plastic tab down here is starting to get a little bit uh, worn, a little bit broken. So I will give it some plastic uh, glue and uh, maybe put another stud on this side here so it doesn't flex so much. So yeah, this clock has been running since 1982 which is uh, 36 years already. The enclosure gets warm, I can tell you that. It really gets warm. This guy here is using a, is, is a dissipating a lot of current, so I might have to um, put the heatsink on the outside here and uh, with a couple of wires to the transistor so that the heatsink is on the external to the box. It gets a little bit more air. But uh, yeah, otherwise it's pretty cool. All right, so here we have the schematic. It's a little bit messy. They have been using this uh, bus lines here and uh, not only the display lines are going through there but uh, also some other control lines. We have the power supply up here. We have the power amplifier here. The voice chip here. The clock chip here. The display here. And the little CMOS logic for the touch. And uh, the alarm circuit comes in here. If we look at the clock circuit first, we basically have the clock chip here and the displays here. Uh, and as you can see, there are no current limiting resistors anywhere to be found on these lines here. And uh, the way they achieve that, because this is not CMOS, the way they achieve that is they have a constant current source internally and some current mirrors. So basically, um, the current will be set internally and uh, the LEDs will just get current from there. So uh, the current will be limited. I don't remember if it's 10 milliamp or something, but uh, they are very bright. So that is a very nice thing. The clock signal to this chip is taken from the 50 Hz from the mains and it comes in through this little pin here. Uh, this chip could be used for both 50 and 60 Hz and some of these uh, pins on the chip here could be either pulled high or low uh, depending on whether you are in uh, 50 or 60 Hz country. Some of these pins could also be used to set a 24 or 12 uh, hour clock and uh, this one is for Denmark only so it's 24 hour clock and uh, 50 hertz input. Apart from uh, these four buttons here that are used to uh, set the clock as we saw and uh, switch the alarm on and off, um, there's also a snooze input here. The snooze signal comes from this touch uh, pad up here that goes through all this logic here and uh, we will have a look at that in a, in, a, in a short while. The 50 hertz comes up from here from the power supply basically being tapped from the transformer. I think there's something wrong with the drawing here, but basically it has two windings and is generating a positive supply and a negative supply. The positive supply is set with this Zener diode and these couple of resistors here. So we basically have 5 volt coming coming out from this chip, uh, from this transistor here. Uh, there is no voltage regulator, it's all done uh, with discrete components. This is a 12 volt transformer, so there's basically 18 volt DC here. And uh, on the output here, there's only 5 volts, so there's a massive voltage drop uh, on, this, on this transistor here. And uh, the rest of the circuit is taking something like 100 milliamps, so it gets really, it gets really warm. Then there's an additional transistor here connected to a switch. And basically what that does is uh, it allows us to uh, disable the LED displays uh, at night. And uh, the light will only turn on when you press the snooze button. So the signal from the snooze goes up and turns on this transistor and then we have light in the display. In the watch that I've built, I've just shorted these two together so uh, there's always light in the display. There's no night, there's no night dimming uh, of the display. 
Apart from that, we have minus 15 volt generated by this Xenon diode here. So there's a minus 15 volt, and that goes through the bus here to the power amp up here. Okay, so that makes that makes sense. The power amp gets a signal, of course, from the speech chip. Uh, the audio comes out through some uh, RC circuits, a little volume control part, and then into the LM380 a power amplifier. Um, there's also a busy signal coming out from the voice chip, and that allows us to mute the audio uh, when when there's not when it's not talking. The voice chip itself has a voice ROM and a voice generating circuit. I have no idea how the algorithm is working internally here, but it's uh, is is compressed. It's definitely compressed in 19. 82 uh, ROM was very very expensive, so uh, that is for sure. The voice chip also has an internal uh, oscillator. This is just an RC oscillator, and uh, the C is here, the R is there, and it's the pot, so you can just adjust it nicely. Finally, the inputs here are, are quite strange because, as you know, we have only the LED displays here, the segments on the LED display, so that means there's no TTL logic levels here. The voltage across the red LED is about 2 volts, so the signal here will be switching between 0 volt and 2 volt. This chip is not CMOS, it's using some other um, some other technology. Uh, let me see, uh, in German. Yeah, this is an N-channel silicon gate technology. So uh, that is, and that was probably uh, the thing back when this one was designed. It's, it's not CMOS as, as we use today. Uh, then finally, if we look at the touch circuit, we have the 25 kilohertz coming out of the speech chip, goes through a filter here, and the touch plate is connected to the center here. So basically, when you are not touching anything, the clock goes through these here. Um, this is a high frequency clock, so they go straight through the uh, capacitors. And uh, it gets buffered, and then it gets rectified by uh, by this diode here and uh, this RC circuit. So generally, this will be high all the time here because the clock will go through here and get rectified. But in case you touch here, uh, the signal here will be uh, will be loaded. So the, the 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 filter here will change characteristics. When you are not touching anything, um, the the signal will just go right through. But as soon as you touch here, uh, the clock signal will have a low resistance from this center point here. And, and therefore the signal here will drop. It will also change the output of this CMOS device. So we have DC here when there's uh, no touch and when you touch it the level will drop. And uh, that will be going through this inverter here. And uh, come out through this transistor switching network and back into the chip here and uh, into here. So when you touch the plate here, this signal will go uh, will go high, and that will start the the speech conversion over here. Obviously, we also need to start speech conversion uh, when the clock has reached the alarm uh, the alarm time. So the signal from the chip goes through another path here, uh, coming in here, going through a similar process, and out here. And these two are then all together using these uh, two resistors here and this transistor network. So either when you touch, there will be a, a spike here that will trigger this, the start of the speech, or when uh, this clock reaches the set alarm time, and then there will be another spike coming out through here, and that will also trigger the speech chip. Finally, before I, I leave, I actually have a couple of spare PCBs. So if anyone is interested and think they can find the main chips for this product, uh, I might be persuaded to part with one or two of these uh, PCBs. Uh, this is the prototype PCB. There's one or two errors uh, on the board itself, but um, I guess I can uh, look at the the one I have in the box here and uh, figure out where the problems are. Uh, for sure, I know this little uh, pin here needs to be cut out. There's something wrong with the with the ground near the power amplifier. But anyway, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and. Uh, See you again soon.